Are you curious if MTHFR is at the root cause of your brain fog, chronic fatigue, depression, and just general kind of malaise in life? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you a couple different ways you can go about finding out your MTHFR status without even having to go to the doctor. Hi, I'm David, founder of Moksha Life, and I help people reclaim their lives from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. So today's video was inspired by a lot of comments that I've been getting um, on my other MTHFR videos where they're asking, how do I find out what my MTHFR status is? And so in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing who should be testing for MTHFR um, specifically. So what are the markers of kind of disrupted methylation? Also, of course, what are the easiest and cheapest ways to find out your MTHFR status? And then also why conventional doctors um, often will dismiss M MTHFR um, and just kind of go into those warnings there too. All right, let's get started. And if you're curious, the hat that I'm wearing today is from my wife's brand called Tuluminati, and you could find a link in the description below. So who should be testing for MTHFR? And I would generally say that everybody should know what their MTHFR status is. Um, however, um, there are a few kind of more specific groups of people that should be particularly wary of their methylation. So the first one is going to be um, women who are trying to get pregnant uh, of childbearing age. And so that's going to be specifically um, in order to inform their folate supplementation. So if they have a comp compromised ability to convert um, you know, folic acid, or just other folinic acid or other forms of folate into methylfolate, which is the bioavailable form, then they're gonna just need a different type of supplement. And so it's really important to understand if you have a compromised um, folate metabolism. The other group of people is gonna be um, cr those with chronic fatigue. Um, so anyone that is um, has chronic fatigue and their uh, vitamins and minerals look pretty good, they have decent nutrition, pretty good lifestyle, um, definitely something to look into. Um, as far as MTHFR is concerned. Depression and anxiety, so um, a lot of times, our, so our neurotransmitters are mostly originating from the gut, especially um, serotonin. And so um, there's a specific variant of MTHFR, especially the COMT, that is gonna affect um, your neurotransmitter production. So that's gonna be really helpful for you to learn because you might be taking SSRIs or you might be um, taking 5-HTP or something else and really um, what you need are methylated B vitamins or to be on a methylation support protocol. Um, this is by, I'm not by any means um, replacing um, whatever medication that your doctor's given you or your psychiatrist in this case. Um, however, um, you may wanna complement it with one of these kind of more foundational routines. Another reason or another group of people is gonna be those who have elevated homocysteine levels. And so, this is a little bit of a controversial topic because conventional medicine says that, um, you know, MTHFR doesn't really lead to the high homocysteine or it's not really related to the cardiovascular risks. However, um, if you do have high homocysteine levels, it's certainly worth knowing if you have um, compromised uh, methylation. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. All right, back to the episode. And, and lastly, another important group uh, who should certainly test for MTHFR is those who have elevated heavy metals. So, and that also includes people who have the symptoms of heavy metal toxicity, especially the brain fog, the kind of neurological symptoms that we very often see with people that have elevated mercury. This is exactly what I had, and this is exactly how I found out about my MTHFR mutation. Um, you don't wanna do this the hard way. You don't wanna have um, the debilitating brain fog, you don't want to have heavy metal toxicity, and then find out about this. So um, what the MTHFR um, test is going to help you understand if you have a predisposition to heavy metal toxicity. And then you can take some meaningful action, you can take um, glutathione and, and a lot of other supplements and lifestyle changes that support uh, these uh, detoxification pathways. So one of the main challenges with addressing the MTHFR mutation at scale is that conventional medical doctors um, don't, they kind of dismiss it, the importance of it. And the main reason they do that is because there isn't kind of a double blind placebo study or definitive uh, scientific evidence that uh, links the MTHFR mutation 
the elevated homocysteine levels, and the cardiovascular risks. There's so much more to MTHFR, and specifically, I would even focus less on MTHFR and just what are the impacts of compromised methylation. And I think one of the kind of bigger aspects of MTHFR that is missing in the conversation, especially amongst conventional medical doctors, is compromised detoxification and the implications of that through your body, especially um, over time. We live in a very toxic world with, you know, between our water, our air, um, our personal care products, plastics, our soil. Um, and so if you have a compromised ability to detoxify, um, this will undoubtedly cause you problems, for sure, if you aren't um, careful and supporting yourself in the right ways. So part of a bigger conversation, but um, just know that conventional medical doctors are largely going to dismiss M the importance of MTHFR. They're going to say that you just test your homocysteine levels, and then you... Um, you know, if the MTHFR is significant enough, it'll appear as elevated homocysteine, and all you have to do is treat the elevated homocysteine. Um, and so there's a lot more to it than that, and methylation is so much more complex and touches so many more aspects of your biology. Um, but, I, but specifically, I want to call out the compromised detoxification and how even if you aren't really as concerned about cardiovascular challenges, addressing your compromised detoxification pathways is absolutely critical to your health. And just to hammer this point home, um, I have uh, you're seeing an article from a geneticist from the Cleveland Clinic, um, usually seen as a pretty reputable source of information, and they're stating that you don't really need to treat MTHFR, um, you can just treat the elevated homocysteine levels, and they go on to tell you to just go ahead and take folic acid, which is a form of folate, that your body can't use if you have an MTHFR polymorphism. So um, this sort of reinforces the point that I was making earlier that a lot of times your conventional medical doctor is not going to uh, see the importance of this and they might even discourage you from finding out this information. And lastly, you just check out this chart here. Um, I've shown it in my other MTHFR videos as well, but uh, this one just says that you are more likely to store heavy metals if you have certain MTHFR gene mutations. So I personally have two of the C677T, so I am predisposed to storing 90% of the heavy metals that enter my body and only detoxing 10%. So given this, looking at this chart, how could you not make lifestyle changes um, in order to prevent this? This seems ludicrous to me that you would just ignore um, a compromised detoxification pathway this way. So um, in natural medicine, we are not going to do that. We're going to balance the body systems and uh, um, address this appropriately. So let's go on to the, the part of the video where I'm going to tell you how to find out your status. All right, so the first one I'm going to talk about is called Prometheus or Prometheus, however you say it. Um, I'm going to go to my report, but basically it's the same idea. You just want to upload your tell me gen, your 23andMe, your My Ancestry information. There's an option to download the raw data for 23andMe. And if you have any questions about that, just go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I, I can share a little bit more details there. Um, but they've done a pretty good job of communicating that. So um, you download the raw data, it's gonna be in a text file and you can just upload it here. That's what I did. And then you get a report, a couple of minutes. This really doesn't take long at all. And it's pretty robust, so you're going to get this dashboard that you're seeing here. And the default view is going to be all your kind of red flags in your genetic predisposition. So it's going to call out, you know, the gene, which gene it is, you know, the instance of it, um, and then the risk factor, and then just kind of any studies related to that. Okay. So with, um, so I have a bunch of stuff in here. Great. I've fantastic genes, right? So um, in my case, let's look at MTHFR. Okay, so you type in MTHFR here, um, you're going to see the gene name. Um, I'll go into all this stuff in another video. It's pretty complex. And this is kind of the important part where it's going to say homozygous for C677T of MTHFR, 10 20% efficiency in processing folic acid um, equals, which leads to high homocysteine low B12 and folate levels. Oh my gosh, terrible, right? So there you go, that's how you find it out. And then, and you know, there's more. Um, there's the COMT levels, which um, you could search for here. So if we type in 
COMT. Um, we should see that. So there's a sexual dimorphic part. And uh, interesting. Thought that I had it, thought it had it somewhere else. But let's see. That, I could have sworn I saw it a moment ago. OK, well, can't seem to find it now, um, but it is in here somewhere. And within the Prometheus platform, you could actually test a, a lot of really interesting things. I'll go into it another time, but um, this one does require a fee. I think it was like $12 to have access to this dashboard for about 45 days, I want to say. And you could break it down by different medical conditions. It's pretty interesting and all sorts of stuff. So definitely worth going in here, especially if you're working with a coach. Um, this could be really helpful because then they could kind of dive a lot deeper and slice and dice this data. But even just going through it to yourself would be really interesting. A tool called Nutra Hacker. And so here you're going to have to have your either 23andMe, your Tell Me Gen, your Ancestry DNA, uh, whichever one you prefer. Um, it doesn't particularly matter. There, there's some other companies too, um, like Self Decode, which is one that I am going to probably do a review on in the future. Uh, but basically, you would go here. And then you would just upload your data, um, make sure that there's no spaces. I actually had that issue personally. And then once it uploads, it kind of automatically just shows you the report. And I will show you quickly um, the free methylation report that they provide. So it's going to be a, a PDF that looks like this. Um, it'll tell you, you know, just very plainly, you know, here's some, they call them mutations. They had one sex linked mutation. And then you can go through here and, you know, yellow will be kind of some ones that you need to be aware of. And then the red are going to be kind of the, the, the real red flags, right? And so uh, they go into like detoxification, uh, neurotransmitter levels, and, uh, and a few other ones. So let's see. So um, for MTHFR here, they put AA22 and then they'll also have the RCID ID which is pretty important. And then they even give you like recommendations on um, when, homo, when homozygous, which is um, my case, it's functioning at about 30% of normal. And then they even tell you like what, what you might want to take and also what, what you might want to avoid. And a lot of it's uh, pretty intuitive or counterintuitive because they may um, tell you to avoid like methyl donors, for example, which is interesting. So like no methylcobalamin, they want you to take uh, hydroxycobalamin, I believe. Um, so, so pretty interesting. Um, I would still say that it's maybe too technical um, for a lot of people. And then um, they also have a pretty interesting tool um, beyond this. So here you'll, you'll know your COMT levels, um, your methylation, you have a lot of different um, kind of re related genomes here, you know, around methylation. And then they have this other tool, which I really like, and it's the, uh, kind of detox supplement visualization tool. So it's really simple. They just say, okay, what do you, what should you take? Okay. So in my case, they say, all right, here we got, I should be taking hydroxycobalamin. Okay. And why do I have to take hydroxycobalamin? It's because I have the COMT. And so they relate it back to your report here where you have the TT22, um, the A22 gene function, um, they talk about the catecholamines, which is something I'm going to talk about in another video. And then you could break that down further. Pretty cool. And it'll be phosphatidylserine, choline, all, all sorts of stuff. It's fantastic. Um, let's see what they say in vitamin B12. So they'll say it should have interesting. So um, here they don't, they recommend vitamin B12, which is interesting. And then for the avoid section, you know, they'll have some things that I should avoid. And some of them are not very intuitive, like curcumin, um, which is great for inflammation, great for a lot of things. This is something I'm gonna look into further. I'm not sure why exactly they um, kind of don't recommend curcumin or advise against it in my case. Um, you know, folate, of course, you definitely want the L5 MTHF. Um, so that's kind of a no brainer. And here we have the counterintuitive one of the methyl B12. Uh, because of the COMT, and I'm going to do an entire video on COMT in the future. Um, but according to this, it says I should not be taking the methyl B12. So lots to learn from this report. Um, you know, definitely worth exploring and 
Um, I'll do maybe some more in-depth ones, but uh, with this report, you will find out your MTHFR status and a lot of um, important details, and you'll, and you'll be able to um, start to make some pretty powerful decisions based off of this. All right, so there you have it. A few easy ways to find out your MTHFR status and to learn a lot about your biology at the same time. Um, it's really easy to get overwhelmed with all this information. It can get very technical, okay? So just take it easy, step by step. And you're gonna be putting together the pieces of the puzzle. You're gonna understand your bio-individuality and you're gonna be so much better equipped than most people to take charge of their health. It's a truly beautiful thing. And um, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And if you have any questions, anything that's come up, anything that you wanna find out, um, please leave me a comment below. I'm always looking for new video ideas, specifically around MTHFR, chronic fatigue, brain fog, okay? And if I had one piece of advice for you, as someone who has been aware of their MTHFR gene mutation um, for about eight years now, is lower your toxic burden and kind of live kind of a low tox lifestyle. So what does that mean? It means um, I removed seafood from my diet, all of it. I don't consume any seafood. I'm also trying to figure out kind of my omega-3 situation. I'll be sharing that in another video where I test my omega-3 to 6 ratio all the time. So I'm going to be learning more about that. Um, another thing is to cleanse the products that you use. Go on the EWG website and enter every single thing you use that touches your skin, your hair, and that goes into your body and that you clean your house with on a regular basis. Make sure you aren't unnecessarily increasing your toxic load. Because when you go to restaurants, when you travel, um, you can't control those environments, okay? So at least control your environment. It should be a sanctuary, a very low tox sanctuary. Detoxing your mind. Where are you holding resentment, judgment? Where are you not forgiving? This um, is more esoteric, but it does create toxicity and inflammation in your body uh, because these are low vibrational thoughts. And so definitely need to address that as well. And then of course, uh, the supplementation. So making sure that you are based off of your MTHFR gene mutation, um, supporting yourself appropriately. And so you don't need to go crazy. You don't need to do these high doses of methylfolate if you don't want to, um, but just making sure you're getting those methylated B vitamins. Um, and there's, there are some exceptions to that, but generally speaking, just a foundational protocol and as well as the folate and making sure you are doing um, regular detoxes. So waste management, just make sure that the liver is getting support, it's doing its job. So I recommend doing a seasonal detox, liver detox specifically, and I'll be sharing more about that in future videos. If you got value from this video and want more videos like it about reclaiming your life from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more updates. Once again, it's a pleasure to be of service to you and to share this information. May you be healthy, may you be happy, and may you move through this world with ease. I'll see you in the next episode.